Welcome to GCP Mindset Channel. Today's topic is regulatory authority inspections in clinical trials. Today, I would like to speak about the publicly uh, available information regarding GCP inspections. And yeah. And therefore, uh, I would like also to share with you the overview from the EMA, FDA, and MHRA, as also already CR mentioned. And these overviews, as I mentioned, are uh, publicly available, but uh, uh, this uh, web seminar will give you the opportunity to have a look uh, what uh, kind of recent uh, uh, inspections and the findings uh, commented uh, based on performed activities. So last time uh, we talked uh, about the free web seminar about the inspection readiness and about the inspection preparation phase. However, today we will focus on the inspection follow-up case and status. And actually the GCP inspections who are performing the GCP inspections. So we know that they are uh, the uh, regulators and these uh, staff uh, who are nominated to perform the inspections, they have uh, to have uh, adequate background training and experience as well in that area. And they are also assigned to act as an uh, inspectors. And therefore, the this is also fully recommended uh, or not, uh, not only required by company SOPs to check to whom you disclose uh, the documentation when uh, someone uh, came to the inspection and uh, ask for access to uh, confidential documentation. Where are the GCP inspections performed? Uh, of course, mostly at the clinical investigational sites, but uh, it's not uh, only the exclusive part uh, for performing the inspections because also the uh, sponsors or CROs or laboratories are inspected uh, quite regularly. When are the GCP inspections performed? Uh, they are uh, usually planned activities, but there are also some triggered inspections and you will see it later on, on some uh, shared information from the regulators uh, about the triggered inspections. And why are the inspections performed? Of course, uh, because it's uh, to verify uh, the compliance, not only to uh, regulatory requirements, but also to the protocol compliance and additional uh, requirements to perform uh, the study and to have a valid and quality data at the end, which are submitted for registration purposes. The inspections uh, are performed by uh, the uh, individual, uh, either individual uh, country regulatory authorities like in Czech Republic, it's a SUKL or SUKL in Slovakia, in Germany, it's BFARM, in Jap uh, Japan, it's a PMDA. Uh, however, also uh, it doesn't mean that only the country specific uh, or country related regulatory agency will perform the inspection uh, in your country because also the other countries countries either can join uh, the inspection by a national authority or can perform uh, the inspection also directly in your region or your country. So as I said, we will focus uh, today for the follow-up phase of the inspections. And therefore, uh, just to summarize at the end of the inspection, uh, if it is directly on site and meaning not only the clinical investigation site, but also at the sponsor, the, there is usually the inspection wrap-up meeting. During this wrap-up meeting, there is the review of the outcomes and potential observations which have been noted during the inspection. There could be or couldn't be also the final discussion, including uh, possibility to address the comments or disagreements with uh, some of the observations noted down by the inspectors, uh, or also to mention out uh, in case uh, any corrections have been uh, already completed during the inspection. Uh, afterwards, uh, there is usually uh, administrative step uh, at the uh, regulatory inspection, uh, inspectors uh, and agency to write the report. Uh, there is a, a different practice based on different countries, uh, specifics uh, where you will be shared with the inspection report or the summary of the report or deficiency letter based on the inspection report. Or in case of the FDA, it could be either the form FDA uh, 4H3, which is the inspection observations, which could or could not be followed by the FDA warning letter, depending on the answers provided back to the 
uh, inspectors, or there is also another less known form, which is called FDA 482 form, where is a confirmation that there have, have been no inspectional observations noted during the inspection. Afterwards, depending also on the regulatory authority, a response uh, may be required uh, to be provided uh, based on these inspection reports or deficiency letters. Uh, sometimes it's not strictly uh, required. Uh, also, FDA inspectors mentioned during the inspection that it's highly recommended, but it's not required per law. However, of course, in case you are not providing the answer uh, to uh, the observations, it could uh, make the final Final grading of the observations averse because you are not providing any uh, suggestion how you will deal with these observations. On the other hand, in case you perform uh, or you provide uh, the answer, including your CAPA plan, this CAPA plan needs to be realistic and need to address all the observations noted down. And of course, not only plan it, but also to execute it, because in case there will be some major or critical findings identified by the agency, uh, there is a high risk meaning high risk of the follow-up inspection for the inspectee. So it means in future, you can also expect such kind of follow-up inspection uh, to also verify how you have implemented your plan or uh, how you have uh, satisfactorily implemented the actions in any future trials uh, which are running at your site or under your responsibility, for example, as a sponsor or as a CRO. Regarding uh, the inspection findings, uh, the, the common uh, practice is to issue the findings uh, like a minor, major, and critical, and also comments. Uh, in FDA, there are also some uh, slightly different classification in terms of uh, no action indication, uh, voluntary action indication, or required action indication. Uh, in terms of uh, EU, we usually use this uh, three grade uh, finding scale. So minor findings uh, also by the regulators means that uh, these are the conditions or practices or processes uh, and the observations noted down that would not be expected to adversely affect uh, the rights, safety or well-being of the subjects or the quality and integrity of the data collected from that clinical trial. However, they still need uh, an improvement and uh, many minor observations may be considered as a, as a let's say, a, with a higher uh, grading uh, because uh, many minor observations uh, may indicate a low quality study and uh, therefore may result in a major finding. And what's the major finding? Uh, major finding are again uh, the conditions, practices, or processes that might adversely affect the rights, safety, or well being of the subjects and the quality and integrity of the data. These are uh, serious deficiencies which are direct devi devi deviations or violations of GCP principles. Uh, there are also a pot possible rejection of this data or any other legal action could be required. And uh, these observations, which are classified as a major, uh, may include also a pattern of deviations and on numerous minor observations. And the most uh, critical, of course, is the critical finding. And what does it mean, a critical finding? So these are, again, uh, the conditions, practices, or processes that adversely affect the rights, safety, and well being of the subjects uh, and the quality or integrity of the data. Uh, this uh, may include also a pattern of deviations classified as a major, but quality of the data or absence of source documents. These are really considered as a critical finding, including fraud. A fraudulent activity is considered as a critical. And critical observations, which is quite obvious, are considered as a totally unacceptable. And rejection of data on a regional action will be required. So you can see that the critical findings are uh, very high importance for all parties involved in clinical research and therefore the inspection readiness and inspection preparation uh, should be uh, really in place to avoid a critical findings uh, uh, will be addressed later on. 
In addition to these three great uh, findings, there are also some comments which are usually not classified uh, under ICHGCP. Uh, however, uh, they are noted down and they usually do not require a submission of corrective and preventive actions. However, it could also vary uh, regulatory authority by authority and the requirements or recommendations uh, or expectations uh, for uh, submitting the answer. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Bye bye.